This is chapter six, the gas chapter. We're going to cover liquids and solids too, but that'll be in chem 2 B. For chem 2 A, we only cover the gases. They're a little easier to start with. And there's a couple things we're going to go over. Uh, as you can see, we're going to start with the gas properties, uh, just as a warm up. And then we're going to pop over to the left side of the flow chart, kinetic theory, and fill out all of that. This uh, the way I cover this is not going to be in the same order as your textbook. So I'm going to cover section one and then jump over to section uh, seven, which is kinetic theory. Okay? And then what? I'll finish that and then we're going to come back to sections two through six. The reason I'm going to do it in that order is kinetic theory is the derivation for everything we use in the first part of the chapter. So I think it makes more sense to find out where does stuff come from, and then we'll do the things that are called the gas laws. Okay? So that's why we do it uh, in a different order than the textbook. But we will do section one uh, regardless. So let's give that a try. Chapter six, uh, section one, general properties and such of the gases. Uh, and gases see everywhere, like a hot air balloon, you warm up, there in the balloon, and then it goes up. Or if you go out to anybody's bike over here after you've done the class, you, uh, there's a little Schrader valve on there, and you take off the little plastic cap, and there's a little button you can start pushing on, and the air will start coming out. If you do that, the air is going to feel like what? Hot or cold. It's going to feel cold. You go try it, do two or three tires out there. <laughs> and that's because the gas is expanding, and as we'll learn in the gas loss section, because it's expanding, it's going to feel cooler. When you put the gas in the tire, it's going to be warmer. So that's all having to do with gases. Now there's some properties of gases I want you to know about. Uh, just general kind of characteristics, I guess. And I'll highlight this in the reader on page 42. They have an indefinite shape and volume. Indefinite shape and volume, so they can take the shape of any container. For uh, our example container, the classroom, it fills the shape. Uh, they can easily, relatively easily, uh, expand or uh, compress, especially compared to solids or liquids, which essentially don't. Uh, they have generally low density, significantly lower density than solids and liquids, and then they diffuse a form of modulus mixtures. What does that mean? As opposed to heterogeneous mixtures. A heterogeneous mixture would be, for example, in our air right now, what are the common gases? What are the three top gases by, uh, uh, oh, nitrogen, oxygen, I don't think I heard it. If you said carbon dioxide, that's not it. If you said water, that's not it. <coughs> Not hydrogen, Number three is argon. Number three is argon, and that's because of radioactive things that happened at the Earth's formation, which you learn about too soon, okay, from, from uh, some catastrophes. Okay, so uh, we have those gases. They are mixed even, meaning uh, I can breathe oxygen and people in the back row can breathe oxygen. Now it would be interesting if all the oxygen migrated to a heterogeneous mixture and surrounded me. Thus you would all die, I was still breathing. Uh, but the gases don't do that, they diffuse out. Okay? Uh, gases are uh, described by certain gas equations you'll learn about. They're called equations of state. So a gas equation is called an equation of state. But typically we're talking about pressure, volume, temperature, and moles. Okay? Uh, we're not going to use, usually we won't use molarity that often, we won't use mass that often, and some of the common ones we've been used to. Okay, let's write a little formula down that you might have seen in physics if you've taken physics before. Pressure is force per unit area. Pressure is force per unit area. The SI units, I'll write in a different color pen. SI units of pa uh, pressure is Pascal. A uh, force is Newton. And the area, that would just be like a meter square. Okay? So a Pascal is a Newton. 
per meter square. Okay? Uh, it's an abbreviation for that. So you can see as the area gets smaller, what happens to the pressure? It goes up. So let's say I was in a bar fight, okay? And I wanted to decide who I'm going to fight, and there's two options. I can either fight an elephant or a female, or I guess a guy, with high heels, okay? Which one do I want to step on my head? Okay? I would slightly prefer the elephant. Because even though the elephant is heavier, likely, the foot pad or the area of the elephant is much larger, thus exerting a smaller pressure on it. Okay? And in fact, if you do the calculation, it would be about 20 times less pressure. So the high heel with that small area would have about 20 times more pressure on whatever it's standing on. Uh, so that's kind of how this equation works. Let me rewrite it again. So yeah, you're in a bar fight, but you can hashtag that. <laughs> uh, take off the elephant. Uh, of course, I'm going to hide Now, uh, this is if you want to look this up on YouTube. Uh, force is mass per acceleration. Acceleration on Earth is gravity. Okay. Uh, mass from chapter one is density times volume or density is mass over volume. So let's make a substitution for mass. <coughs> volume, well, let's rewrite this, density, gravity, times volume over area. Volume, let's go down with me over here. Get some fleas, <laughs> It's cool, right? Okay. As I do, I'll give it to the Volume is area times height. Divide by area, the area is canceled. And so another way to write pressure is density times gravity times height. This uh, formula is especially useful if you're talking about liquids. So the, uh, the height, and that could be height under the liquid, if you will. So below the liquid level, uh, that will give you what pressure the liquid is exerting on. So the lower you go down, if you're scuba or scuba diving or something like that, you have to equilibrate your uh, pressure inside your eardrums to be able to go down there because it's, the water is pushing up. The cool thing about this is pressure, does anybody know what this is? Yeah, it looks like an alpha, but it means is proportional to, we're going to use that a couple times. Pressure is proportional to, because density is a constant, for a particular liquid, gravity is constant. Uh, pressure is proportional to height. So the area of the pool is irrelevant. Uh, and I've got this kind of interesting picture here. Uh, we've got a liquid connected at the bottom. And notice the different areas and shapes and twists of the different ones. But the liquid level height is identical for all of them. That's because pressure is proportional to height. So it doesn't matter the size of the pool or container. Okay, more about pressure here. Um, we can measure pressure in a couple different ways. One way, barometer, uh, that will make no sense to the viewing audience. So. That's okay. You have to come to get the jokes. Sometimes you come and you don't get the jokes. The barometer uh, looks something like this uh, in a very basic form. It could be electronic, definitely. But uh, there's a, a liquid in the bottom, and because of atmospheric pressure pushing on that liquid, it pushes the liquid up the tube. And depending on the height of the tube, because you have height, you can also find the pressure. And so you have atmospheric pressure. Uh, so when uh, they're giving you pressure on the news, like high pressure or low pressure system, you're watching the weather, this is their game right off of barometer. OK. That's one way. There's another way to measure pressure, and that's a manometer. OK. A manometer is good for measuring pressures of gases, not just atmospheric pressure. So in general, to find the pressure of a given gas, that's what a manometer is helpful for. 
Uh, let me show you one. This is a picture from your textbook. There's one in your reader that's much simplified. A complicated version. Uh, this one is on textbook page 198. The reader is page 43. Uh, okay, I'm going to zoom in just the right way here. Okay. This is kind of one. Here's what one will look like. I'll show you an actual picture later. Not just artistic whatever. In this case, there's the real U2 there where the liquid is. And there's a gas on the right and an open atmosphere on the left in this case. P bar means pressure of the atmosphere. And then there's pressure of the gas. So the pressure of the atmosphere is pushing on one side, the pressure of the gas on the other side. If they're equal, like in this case, then the liquid level almost has to be the same. If the pressure of the gas is greater, then the, the gas will push the liquid down lower, okay, than the atmosphere is able to. If the pressure of the atmosphere is greater, then it'll push the level of the at this side, the atmospheric side, down lower. Well, knowing this information, specifically knowing the height between the liquid levels, we can find the pressure of the gas. So, uh, let me try to draw one. Here's the gas. We go here. Looks something like that. Okay. Okay, let's say we have that and the height difference. This was a change in height. All right, delta H for change in height. So, I'll say pressure gas equals pressure atmosphere. Now, right now, which one's smaller? The pressure of the atmosphere or P bar or P atmosphere either way or P gas? Which one's smaller? See how the gas pushes down to here, but the atmosphere only pushes here. You see that? So the gas is pushing harder. So that's the stronger one or the higher pressure. <coughs> So to the P atmosphere, I need to add some change in pressure term. And that change in pressure term is specifically density times gravity times the change in height. If the pressure of the gas was smaller, then I'd put that delta P on the other side. Okay. And that's essentially, if you take a look at your textbook picture, what it's getting at uh, in its picture. Let me show you a figure of an actual, some actual manometers. This inside. Uh, this one is a typical one you might see in a lab where you're measuring gas pressure. It's connected to a number of valves so you can change the gas that you're putting in to measure the pressure of. There's one here, this is a house system. This is to measure the amount of radon in your, in your home. And uh, here, this is actually pulling up, and the reason is uh, there's a fan in here that's blowing through, and so uh, the pressure is lower in this pressure. And then here's one that somebody just made, and I believe they use this to measure the uh, pressure of the, uh, the gas in the gas tank of their airplane, something like that. So that's just a homemade one. Uh, so those are just examples. Numbers, whether you're testing leaks or for radon or doing lab experiments, whatever. Okay, let's work a little bit on units. This is uh, either on page, let's see, this is the bottom of page 43 in the reader or in your textbook on the top of page 200. I will give you these units, but you just need to know how to use them, okay? So everything here is compared to one atmosphere. Uh, you can have 760 millimeters of mercury, MMHG, or Tor, or Pascals, which is also a Newton per meter squared, or a kilopascal, or a bar, or a millibar. Uh, the ones we'll least likely use, I guess, are the millibar and kilopascals. Otherwise, you'll see the other ones pop up from time to time. Um, probably the top four, let's see, one, two, the top four are the most often. 
and really three and four are the same. Uh, and let me just say a little bit more about SI units. Uh, and there is a YouTube video, by the way, just called Pressure Units. If you want to see me explain a little bit of what I'm about to say. Uh, here's something you should know. A Pascal, I already mentioned that's a newton per meter squared. A newton is a mass times an acceleration, meters per second squared. Okay? And eventually I'll tell you more about something called a joule as well. I'll, I'll just mention it if anyone's curious. It's a newton meter. We're going to see joules a little later in the chapter. So, a Pascal. You know, just be comfortable manipulating units around. It would be a newton per meter squared. You can cancel out a meter and go kilograms meter per second squared. Another way to write a Pascal. What I would be familiar with it if I were you, know this and this. And eventually you'll need to know this one too. Once we get uh, in next week. Okay, so you want to know those three if you don't know those units already. Alright, let's say you have a car, maybe. And uh, on that car, let's say you have a tire. And that tire has a, you can put a gauge on that. on the tire to measure the tire pressure, okay? Uh, that gauge pressure, I'll call that P gauge, the pressure you measure on your tire, which is the filling station for the own gauge, is the pressure of the tire, but not just the pressure of the tire. Remember, the atmosphere is pushing on the tire. So there's atmospheric pressure outside. So this is also, uh, plus the pressure in the atmosphere. So when you actually measure the pressure of the tire, you're measuring the sum of two things, the pressure of the tire and the pressure of the atmosphere, sum together. The pressure of the atmosphere, usually tire pressure is in PSI, so the pressure of the atmosphere is 14.7 PSI. And so the pressure in your tire is actually smaller than what you're measuring. You'd have to remove the pressure of the atmosphere. Uh, in, if you're talking about a vacuum, not the cleaner, but if you're removing gas uh, from a container, what do you think the pressure? The pressure would go down to approximately zero, and the reason is there's no gas molecules in it to exert pressure on the wall. So the vacuum would be the opposite, go in the opposite direction, it has zero pressure, essentially because there's no gas molecules. Okay, I guess it's time to talk about the exam. Does that sound good?